into the world of amazing animal neighbors. <laughs> ah, this is the life. Peace and solitude. Getting away from it all. Traveling light. Nothing but the essentials. No animals, no neighbors, nothing to spoil the peace and quiet. Ah, and plenty of fresh air. Oh, I knew it was too good to be true. Say, Henry, you don't really want to get away from everything, do you? I did, yeah. Won't you miss living around all your amazing animal friends, enjoying their company? What do I need them for? I'm so self-sufficient. So self-sufficient? I can stand on my own four feet. Everybody needs good neighbors, Henry. Just look around you. Animals everywhere have to share their homes with other animals. And they have to learn to get along, too, if they want to survive. Who invited you, Mr. Know-it-all? I'm just being neighborly. Now take these frisky hyraxes. They're good neighbors from the same species, cuddling together for warmth. But I wouldn't cuddle them. I'd be squished. Neighbors also come from different species. This bird provides a cleaning service for giraffes. He didn't get all the spots out. <laughs> you know, Henry, if you bothered to get to know your neighbors, you might discover how useful they can be. Excuse me. I think you mean creepy. I'm not saying that animal neighbors are always good to have around. I'll say. Many just want to be left alone. Others might try to act scary. And some would have you over for lunch. Yikes! Only one thing is certain. Animal neighbors are a fact of life. So are Brussels sprouts, but I don't have to live with them. Tight, Henry. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Bugs? What bugs? It's just an expression. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. one that has to live with annoying animals, Henry. This male weaver bird has spent days weaving a magnificent nest, hoping to attract a mate. Maybe he should try a nice aftershave. <laughs> right. Now this chameleon is just passing through. He means no harm, but the weaver bird is worried the lizard will wreck his nest. We may be cold-blooded, but us lizards are no homewreckers. The weaver doesn't know that. His chances of having a family depend on having a perfect nest. If it gets ruined, he'll never become a dad. He must protect the nest at all costs. I'm sticking up for lizard kind. There he is, out for a walk, minding his own business. Then, 
Hey! He's called the Masked Weaver. So that's it. Give him a mask and he thinks he's some kind of superhero. Low blow! Come on, green guy! Chameleons are tough, but they'd rather run than fight. Are you a lizard or a louse? Now it's two to one! Oh, in the eye, not fair! Looks like the weaver got his way, Henry. Well, excuse me. But like I always say, if you can't beat them, why not go fishing instead? Okay, here goes. Say, what's that fish doing? That, Henry, is the champion gardener of the underwater world. A gardening fish? Now I've heard everything. The male Garibaldi fish grows his own algae to make sure his babies will have plenty to eat when they hatch out. Who need algae? Unfortunately for the Garibaldi, most of his neighbors, sea urchins, love it. So it's time to do a little weeding. Ouch! Careful, those urchins are prickly. The Garibaldi has to work hard protecting his food supplies from hungry neighbors. Uh-oh! Here comes a crab disguised as a snail. That's a hermit crab, to be precise. I do love it when you're precise. The Garibaldi won't rest as long as he knows his baby's lives depend on it. You know, I think that old Gary Baldy guy deserves a special Amazing Animals prize, don't you? What for, Henry? Best gardener? Best underwater father? Neatest neighbor. Come on, shoo! Get out of my yard! Admiring the view, Henry? No, I'm admiring someone's handiwork. Check out this hole. There was someone on the roof last night. Who could have done that kind of damage, I wonder? Who, indeed? That's what I said. Who? Huh? I think it came from that tree, Henry. Oh, yeah? Well, now we'll see what kind of good neighbor would do this. Okay, come on out, you... You, you... Ah! Don't be scared, Henry. That owl's a friendly neighbor. It's not the owl I'm scared of. It's the ground. Ah! Yeah! Are you okay? I'm fine. The ground broke my fall. Go on, shoot! They're just hedgehogs. They're trying to be friendly. Well, I think they're a pain in the... Henry! Why couldn't I land on something soft, like them? Can a lizard get a bit of neighborhood support around here? Support works both ways, Henry. Try making the first move to be friendly. That's what some little chimps do when they need a playmate. That little girl looks like she wants to have fun. She's got her hair all done. Now she's ready to play. But baboons and chimps don't usually get along very well. Chip up, kiddo. Don't be shy. Go ahead. Don't be a chump. Be a chimp. Whoops. There she goes. Yeah. And she's brought her big brother, too. But Mother Chimp looks worried. Baboons can get pretty rough, even when playing with their own kind. Goochie, goochie, go. Look, she's having fun. Relax, Mom. Give the kid a break. You're right, Henry. Even though the grown-ups don't always get along, the juvenile chimps and baboons prove that it's good to keep an open mind about your neighbors. Isn't that right, Henry? I agree. Well, any excuse to avoid bath time, you know. <laughs> 
Henry, Henry, it's time for your news report. What? Now? Yes, now. Out of my way! Journal Lizard coming through! Tonight, Buffalo's nose on the run after hanky shortage. And never play with super glue. Jorge learns the hard way. But now, our top story. New neighborhood swimming pool grand opening. The local animals threw a pool party last night, which opened with a bang. The dolphins were diving. The seagulls were surfing. And the Dalmatians did the doggy paddle. Only the cats didn't like the water, which made the fish pretty happy. The crocodiles weren't invited. Their neighbors feared they would eat everything in sight. Which was bad news for the hot dogs. Local volleyball star Sam Seal joined in the fun and signed autographs. So finally, animal neighbors have a place to meet, exercise, and have fun. Looks like the new pool made a real splash. Think they bought it? You couldn't even give it away, Henry. Rats. Come on, Henry. It's time you face facts. Check out this African water hole and see what really happens poolside. Yuck. I think they forgot to chlorinate. One thing you were right about. Wherever there's water, you're sure to run into lots of animal neighbors. And not all of them friendly. Excuse me. Do you see that? Water holes can be a lifesaver for animals in need of water, but the threat of nearby predators makes drinking here a risky business. It's my big cousin Monty! Looking for his lunch, but the mongooses aren't letting him near. I don't blame them. You should smell his breath. Next he'll try sneaking up on some weaver birds. More weaver birds? Uh oh! Sorry! Can't stay for lunch! I think Monty's lost his touch. This is no pool party, Henry. Even more dangerous reptiles lurk in the water. Even Monty's scared of them. He should be. Crocodiles have eyes and nostrils on top of their head. They can stay almost completely hidden underwater as they sneak up on their prey. After traveling miles in the hot African sun, these wildebeest are dying for a drink. Dying's right. If they don't step back, they'll be wildeburgers. The crocodiles need to eat just as much as the wildebeest need to drink. Oh no! Wildebeest! Seed the crocodile before it's too late! The wildebeest are at their most vulnerable when they have their heads down. The crocodiles know this and lie in wait. Phew! Lucky escape! Those crocs sure do love their neighbors! For breakfast, lunch, and dinner! <laughs> what a great idea. Now I'll catch that culprit. What are you doing now, Henry? Identifying the villain. He was uh, kind of big and had a long tail and a mask. Are you sure it wasn't the Lone Ranger? Smart guy. Hmm. Right tail, wrong face. Hmm. Right face, wrong tail. Ah, right color. Could be 
Except that penguins aren't known for their climbing skills. Okay, okay. So how am I supposed to find out who it was? Have you tried meeting your neighbors, getting to know them a bit better? <clears throat> I thought so. Part of knowing thy neighbor, Henry, is being able to tell who's who, which can be tricky when your neighbors are penguins. Not from me. I know the score. It was a hot day in Tierra del Fuego. That's penguin talk for Gangsterville. Oh no, here we go. I've been hired to follow this guy, Poppy the Penguin. I could tell by his face that he was bad news. He thought he could lose me in traffic, but once I'm on a stakeout bucko, I stick like glue. Are you sure of that? Hey, oh, what? Hey, where's Poppy? Watch them closely, Henry. There are thousands of penguins living together here. There he is. Uh, I mean him. I know that puppy anywhere. And now he's picked up with Dugout Doug, an old jailbird friend of his. They passed some gulls. I smell the rat. Those gulls are always looking for a fight. They headed for Doug's dugout. But when the heat is on, Doug says, eat grit and shuts them out. You're half right, Henry. Penguins can be very selfish when it comes to sharing their burrows. Out in the cold, Poppy has to face the gulls alone. I don't think there's a fight brewing. Poppy is just keeping an eye on them. He's staring them down. They decide it's time to fly. Come back down and face me like a penguin, you see, chickens. Calm down, Henry. Penguins aren't gangsters. All your Poppy really wants is plenty to eat and eventually a female penguin to share his nest with. He knows what he wants, and he knows how to get it. Hey! Who put that there? Someone set a trap for Poppy, but who? Could it be them? Those guanacos are just minding their own business. I've seen it all. The longer the legs, the taller the trouble. Henry, Poppy is just an ordinary young Magellanic penguin patrolling the neighborhood and finding out who's who. Ordinary? He's the leader of the pack. And here's his gang now, Poppy's Pussy. They're called cavies. There's also a word for a story like Poppy's. Really? What? It's called Poppycock. And now, ladies and gentle lizards, it's time for a Henry's Amazing Golden Gecko Award. The winners of my all-time best amazing animal neighbor are... In third place, it's Gary Gary, quite contrary. Man, does your garden grow? That's Garibaldi, Henry. No need for name calling. And in second place, the Hyrax, that far distant relative of the elephant who's so friendly, you need a crowbar to pry them off one another. But my Golden Gecko Award for the best animal neighbor in a supporting role goes to the Peregrine Falcon. Interesting choice, Henry. Why the Peregrine? Because even though they're fearsome hunters, they're great to have around the neighborhood. Peregrines won't ever eat their closest neighbors. How considerate of them. Yeah, so Mother Red-Breasted Goose here can relax. Peregrine parents travel far and wide to find food for their new baby chicks. There's some in the nest. If Mrs. Goose lived further afield, her babies might end up as food for the falconettes. But since she lives next door, she can hatch her eggs in peace. And falcons are the best thing since Mother Chimp when it comes to keeping an eye on things. I think the goose sees something that falcon doesn't. What? Where? There, an arctic fox. There goes the neighborhood. Sound the alarm, Goosey! Foxes love chicks. Really? And eggs, too. Of course. Alerted by the goose, mother and father falcons swoop into action to run that fox out of town. I'm so happy those peregrines have moved into the neighborhood. It's so much safer now. Oh, falcons, how can I ever thank you enough? Well, they could start by remembering not to eat their neighbors. And because the peregrine is such a good guy to live next door to, it wins my Golden Gecko Award for the Best Animal Neighbor. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>
Big ears. What are you doing now, Henry? Shh. We're watching the neighborhood. Come in, big ears. Green leader to big ears. Come in, big ears. Come in, big ears. Green leader to look out one. Do you read? Green leader to look out one. Do you read? I don't think this is what they mean by neighborhood watch somehow. Shh. What's that noise? I know that tail! Go, go, go! Caught ya, Red Pod! The criminal always returns to the scene of the crime. They're no criminals, Henry. Those are raccoons. That's no excuse for messing up my attic. Raccoons often nest in the roofs of houses. They're your neighbors. Treat them with respect. Oh! If I knew anyone lived upstairs, I would have invited them for dinner. Nice to meet you. Now this great lookout not only watches over her neighbors, she even feeds them too. She's an Asian langur monkey. And these deer are called cheetles. So the cheetles get the middles, right? Yep, all because the langur's a fussy eater. The cheetles follow them and get to eat all the food the monkey throws away. Langer leftovers, oh yum. The langers also provide another service. The down-to-earth cheetles can't see predators the way a langer can atop their tree. I spy with my little eye something beginning with T. The langer sends a first warning. You tell them. The tiger is a silent stalker, well camouflaged on the forest floor. So the langer keeps the cheetle posted of its movements. The tiger prepares to pounce. But too late, the langer sounds the final alarm. That's langer anger! Even a big tiger's no match for a little monkey in the right place. Thanks to Neighborhood Watch. Yeah, I guess helping out your animal neighbors can help everyone, especially when they drop food on you. Hmm. You're not still worried about burglars, are you, Henry? No, I'm making a raccoon flap. There's no need to be sarcastic. But I am! Okay, fella, it's all yours now. <laughs> Sorry, Henry. I guess you've learned to get along with your new neighbors, huh? Sure have. I came here to get away from animals, but made a whole bunch of new friends. So will you be staying? It's a nice place to visit, but they don't get cable in the woods. After all, there's no place like home.